Hi folks and welcome back to the 1000D build log. So we're really in the thick of things now. We've got a lot of the work already done that I've been looking at off camera. So we're gonna go through that first before we start working on some of the more custom work for the reservoirs and the other cooling parts today. So starting off, we've got a lot of aluminium that I've done off camera. So these are the top radiator mounts. So we've got a nice sturdy one. This attaches to the base plate that I made last week. I've also got a bottom plate, very hefty. This one has to be really strong, obviously, because literally everything comes off this one. So it's really, really hefty and has all the mounting points for the various distro plates and other hardware going in it. In addition to those ones, we've also got the front radiator mounts. Now these have been done a little bit differently because I didn't want to waste a huge amount of aluminium on these. So they're done in like strips. So again, this is all five mil aluminium. These are going to be attaching directly to the radiators and held in place that way. And they've got Parvin modding cubes, which are 12 millimeter threaded standoff cubes, which are going to be holding the whole thing together. Then to the fanciest stuff, I've also cut the motherboard trays. And here they are. So I've gone, made sure that all the edges are nicely chamfered, all polished up. And these are going to sit right at the front and on the rear side of the case. And of course, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see them, but you know, it's the, it's the little details that really matter here. In addition to the aluminium work, we've also got a lot of acrylics. So the first thing that I made yesterday is this. It's a custom SLI terminal for the graphics cards because the stock one, although it looks very nice, it doesn't really fit with the theme because it's made out of black acetal. So I wanted an acrylic one and I also wanted the ports to come around the back. So it's gonna be sitting in this orientation. The graphics cards will be flush on this side and the ports are gonna come back here and run into a distro plate along the bottom. And the second one is this bad boy. So this is a distro plate which is going inside the center. And as you can see, it's got fan spacing. So it's gonna have a 480 millimeter radiator, which is gonna fit onto here. And then that's gonna sit in the middle of the case and it connects to the other distros with tubing and a few other lines with the wires and so on. So that's what we've gone so far. Next step is to start making some of the more interesting parts for the inside. So what we're going to be doing today is machining the main distro plate in the setup. Well, it's got two halves to it, so we're going to be doing the top half today because it's quite large. We can't realistically fit both in one session. Plus, I don't actually have enough plastic yet. The rest is going to be arriving tomorrow. So what it is, is it's a mount where all of the heat killer reservoirs that we've got fit into it directly. Now, I'm going to explain how they work. So this is a heat killer tube reservoir. It has a 60 mil glass tube on the inside, so it's borosilicate glass, which means it has no threads on it. So these reservoirs have these aluminium struts in them, which are threaded on the inside. Now, what's special about that is that on either end of the top and the bottom here are big fat O-rings. Now these compress using some M4 screws that thread into the bars themselves. This means that you get a nice tight seal along the edge of the glass without using any threads. The other handy thing is because this is a very simple design, I can quite easily incorporate it into, say, a distribution plate. So I'm going to be doing just that. I've got a test piece that I made a while back as a proof of concept just to see that it does work. As you can see, it does hold water. So I'm basically going to be doing this. I'm going to be machining a plate along the bottom, which is going to have channels that come in and out of it. And then I'm going to be using the existing compression method and O-rings to ensure that the tubes all line up. But I'm not going to be doing one, I'm going to be doing three, each one plumbed into a separate loop. So I'm going to have one in the forefront and two further back, each plumbed into their own loop, which is going to have a different coolant and different lighting. So it should look really special. Today we're going to be making the top one. So let's get into how you do that. 
The stock reservoirs have a 6mm wall thickness and the glass squidged against an o-ring held in both the top and the bottom. I've gone and modelled the actual reservoirs that water cool cells just so that I can be sure of all the measurements and how they all fit together. For my own one, all I really need to do is have a 6mm deep channel. There's also a 3mm offset for the aluminium struts, so as long as I make sure that this is 3mm, the compression will be quite similar and the whole thing will be watertight. The tricky one about this job is that it's going to be double-sided on both ops. So I've got the main screws going to be holding everything together, and then I've got the countersinking operations and any of the beautification on one side, and then the other side has the really crucial parts where I need to be very accurate and make sure I hit my tolerances. That's going to be the trouble and it's going to be difficult. But if I make sure that I'm methodical, it should all be fine. So with this all modeled up now, it's time to go into CAM, get it all prepped for cutting, export the G-code, and let's get this on the machine. Both sides have been successfully cut from either side, so now it's time to put everything together. I'm going to be using M4 16mm countersunk screws, but first I need to make sure that the O-rings are done, because otherwise there won't be any watertight seal. The way I like to do this myself is I like to make them. I use just simple 2mm O-ring cord bonded together with cyanoacrylate superglue. You have to be very careful and make sure that the ends meet very squarely, because otherwise you're going to have leaks and weak points. The way I do this is I use a very sharp X-Acto knife, and just make sure that the ends are completely flat. You have a little bit of leeway if you smooth the edges a bit and make sure always to put the seam by a screw hole that's going to put it at maximum pressure. That way any internal gaps have a best chance of sealing. Using a flexible superglue like a, a Loctite one will allow you to be able to have a little bit more leeway in that fashion too. This plate will replace the tops for this particular reservoir. The second plate I'm going to be machining later along with the pump bracket which it feeds into. Since there's still so much left to do, I'm going to be handling that off camera. Next week, we're going to be taking all the finished parts and finally putting them into the case itself and getting this thing out of the door. So see you then.